Hi, uh, welcome to Agastya Technologies uh, Gate Oriented Classes. In this series, we are introducing Theory of Computation, TOC, also called as a flat. My name is Anja Neyulu Pika. Currently, I am working as a principal engineer in Johannesburg, South Africa. I am working in financial sector. From 2003 to 2006, I given many lectures for the GATE students in India, especially in Hyderabad, Vishakapatanam, Vijayawada, Pune and Bangalore. Today we are going to elaborate what is automata what is the computation theory of when we talking about TOC theory of computation the basis for the theory of computation is when we talking about automata what is automata so the definition is simple the study like we can say the study of abstract computing devices this is the just the definition we can say study of abstract computing devices now you see computing devices is clear studies of is clear but what what about the abstract the abstract term is used in many places in the programming languages in many places this is used but the meaning is differs abstract means these are not real computing devices not these are not a real computing devices abstract computing devices that's what the study of abstracting computing devices is called automata theory so in 1930s where the foundation for the computer science laid out by a great personality called Turing such a great personality he laid down the basis for the computer science so what the computer science is now all the credit we have to give to Turing because in 1930s he started studying what what was his goal that time the goal what was his goal is what is computable what is not computable that's what by using abstract computing devices so by using that those are abstract that the term real computing devices were not exist so he created abstract computing devices abstract computing devices and if he, he, his aim was what can be computable what cannot be computable what we can compute with these devices and what cannot be the same problem is also have exists the same thing with our modern computers with these modern computers now exactly that is resembling the same problems he had now is also what is computable what not computable now in the same in 1930s until 1940s that's what the Turing is contributed a lot 
to the computer science technology in 1930s and 1940s simpler kind of machines are developed to model to simulate to model or to simulate stimulate brain functions the human brain functions to simulate the simple model machines are developed these are these are automatas these are simply finite automatas but later they turn to be useful in many areas we are going to elaborate in our upcoming sessions but originally finite automatas are originally they started to model the brain functions the major again the major development was happened in 1950s where the charms key is also one of the main contributor to the computer science technology now we're talking about compilers and all these the basis laid out in 1950 by the chomsky so chomsky started formally is doing the research on on the formal grammars these formal grammars are closely related to the automatas they are closely related we will see we already discussed in our previous introduction to chomsky hierarchy how the grammars languages finite automatas are related interrelated and also these are the basis even for like many computer science like components like you take compilers most of the compiler components the basis is lying in this formal grammars and this was the chomsky's contribution again in 19 in 1960 as cook is also started the same thing what in 1930 the turing goal was by using abstract devices by using abstract devices what is computable what is computable what not what is not computable the same study is extended by cook in 1930s there are many many contributors now because of their efforts now the computer science technology is enjoying because they laid out all the basics and all the foundations so whatever the computer science computing machines we are seeing all these are like you know where the basis the theoretical development started we can we can say in from from 1930s where major contribution by by turing by later by chomsky these these are the two big names we can we can see in the computer science and technology let's uh, recap what we discussed so far because this is a very uh, important uh, hierarchy and relations we have to remember the rest of the uh, the chapters the complete the chapters is based on this hierarchy only that's what uh, i'm giving more stress on this hierarchy to remember Uh, there is no need to remember while while we completing the courses you guys going to have a very clear understanding of the hierarchy let's let's recap uh, the the hierarchy here the first one even we when we discussed about this this area is a regular so when we say regular a language then context free language 
context sensitive language a recursive language which is decidable and recursive enumerable undecidable we, we introduced one more layer here previously we combined these two so when we say regular language context to free language context to sensitive language recursive language decidable and recursive enumerable undecidable when we say regular language regular language the regular language the corresponding grammar for this regular language is here when we see the grammar here the regular language corresponding grammar is regular grammar what is meaning of grammar so when we have a regular language means definitely you can define that language by using regular grammar if you have regular grammar then you have a corresponding regular language so that's one when we have a regular language you have a corresponding regular grammar when we have a regular grammar or regular language then you have we have an acceptor so this is terminology some 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 way they called acceptors some they called missions that that recognizes the language is finite automata so means the the automata that recognizes that accepts regular language is called finite state automata means if you have a finite state automata you can you can you can define the language accepted by finite state automata by using regular language if you have a regular language you can have a regular grammar means any one of the if you have one you can have other ones if you have a regular grammar you can extract regular if you have a regular language if you have a regular language you can you can from this regular language you can define regular grammar you can define fa if you have a regular grammar then you can define fa and you can define rl so if you have one of these then corresponding to we can extract r3 are related means different ways to define you can define same thing in three forms in the regular grammar form in the regular language form or in the finite automata form that's what they say here when you say regular when you're talking about finite automata then you call in, in, in while you're talking about automata that is the that is the right terminology then you, you have to define the auto, finite automata either is a dfa or nfa deterministic or non-deterministic and uh, at the same time this is called a type 3 grammar type 3 grammar type 3 grammar and expression so I, I, i'm trying to not to discuss this expression so we will, we will elaborate more on this one later only i'm interested in so regular what is the corresponding grammar regular grammar what is the language regular language what is the automata finite automata then it goes to context free when it comes to context free language is context free language context free language cfl what is the grammar cfg also called type 2 type 2 and again what is the automata push down automata means same thing can be defined if you have a push down automata you can you can you can you can write cfl which accepts acceptor of the cfl which recognizes the cfl language you can you can you can define that automata if if you have the cfl then you have a corresponding pda then if you have pda you have a corresponding cfl if you have a cfl you have a corresponding cfg this is very important the meaning is what is the meaning of corresponding cfg if you have pushed on automata p1 pda1 pda1 the corresponding language is cfl1 the corresponding grammar is cfg1 then if you have a pushed on automata 2 pda2 
the corresponding language is CFL2 and CFG2 corresponding this is very important means one thing you can define in any one of if you have one means obviously how are the remaining two the next one is context sensitive this one is called the automata which accepts recognizes this one is linear bounded automata LBA the grammar the, the LBA this one is context to sense to language context sense to language and also called type 3 grammar type type 3 type 2 type type 1 grammar sorry so type 3 is regular type 2 is context free context sense to is type 1 so now when we have a context free context sense to language then you have a linear bounded automata that grammar is type 1 grammar then it comes to recursive recursive which is decidable means a Turing mission which halts then it comes to recursive enumerable which is undecidable this is Turing mission which may not halt So like this, so from regular language, though, so now from here, regular languages are subset of context free languages means all regular languages are context free. Yes, all context free are regular, no, because context free is the superset of regular. Then context sensitive languages is the superset of context free means all regular and context free obviously context sensitive then recursive enumerable contains all remaining three now here is this is the table if we see the table then regular language type 3 grammar is regular automata is either dfnfa then type 2 context free then automata is push down automata then type 1 context sensitive which is the automata is a linear bounded automata type 0 is unrestricted or free grammar the automata is Turing missions this is what the introduction is in the next session we are going to discuss about some basics before we start finite automata Thank you very much for listening. Let's start with the computation overview. In computation overview, in our, especially in theory of computation, we are going to discuss about DFA also called FA finite automata or deterministic finite automata finite automata also called as these are also called as DF S deterministic finite state M deterministic these are called deterministic finite state missions DFA this is first what we are going to elaborate and we are going to start NFA non-deterministic finite automata also called NFSM 
non deterministic finite state missions this is what we are going to discuss more elaborate on in chapter 1 once we finish this one we are going to focus on push down so again before we going to this all the the languages also we are going to discuss related to these finite state missions is called regular languages regular languages so in nutshell we are going to say deterministic finite like finite state mission either deterministic or non deterministic these are related to regular languages and regular languages the missions that are related to the regular languages is finite state missions also called we give finite state missions finite state missions are finite automata nothing but related to regular languages means we can if you have a regular language you can define finite automata or finite state mission if you have a finite state mission then we can describe the regular language corresponding to that mission very important corresponding to that mission what is this one we will elaborate more in chapter 1 this is the relation what we are going to discuss in chapter 1 in chapter 2 we are going to in chapter 2 we are going to discuss about push down automata push down automata this is the missions so these are powerful compared to fa how they are powerful we are going to discuss so from finite automata we are coming into one level up a powerful mission push down push down automata the languages related to this one is context free languages context free languages so if you have a context free language you can define a push down automata if you have a push down automata then you can have a context free language corresponding to the push down automata this is what we are going to elaborate later once we done with the finite automata including both the deterministic and non deterministic then we are going to discuss about push down automata and again the corresponding context free languages the next one the next one we are going to elaborate on decidable problems decidable problems this one related to a powerful mission called turing mission turing mission that halts that stops so a turing mission that halts then we are going to describe that one as a decidable problems and again we are going to discuss about undecidable undecidable problems in undecidable problems is also a turing mission turing mission may not halt we can't guarantee that it halts what is this meaning of halting don't worry about this one just like we we are giving an overview of what we are going through so the next one once we done with the push down automata we are going to discuss about decidable problems the corresponding turing missions that halts undecidable problems 
या सो टूरिंग मिशन मे नॉट हाल्ट मे नॉट हाल्ट दैट इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन इन नटशल व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू एलाबोरेट इन दिस कोर्स इज दिस हायरार्की इज आल्सो कॉल्ड चॉम्स्की हायरार्की charms ki hierarchy in this what is this hierarchy if we start here the lower one what we are going to discuss about finite automata also called finite state missions the corresponding language is a regular language like this regular language finite state automata when we move one level up more powerful is context free languages cfl here we are going to discuss about push down automata so like this means from regular languages you can define in terms of finite automata if you have finite automata you have a corresponding regular language the same like this pa push down automata context free languages then we are moving one level up here context sensitive languages from here linear bounded automata linear bounded automata this is nothing but what we are going to discuss about a turing machine that halts next we are moving into one level up recursively enumerable recursively enumerable recursively recursively enumerable what is this one will elaborate don't worry about anything just this is the complete overview we are going to elaborate in a very very clear manner so for this one is turing machine may not halt so this is the the languages going like this these are the automata acceptors so for these languages these are the automata acceptors if you have a regular language what is the acceptor automata finite automata if a context free language what is the automata push down automata again it comes to come if you have push down automata can you can you accept see see the the context free languages the regular language is a subset of cfl means again the push down automata accepted languages are cfl means more powerful means do they accept or are obvious there is no question here again lba do they accept cfl or are obvious they accept because they subset rl is subset of cfl cfs is subset of csl csl is set subset of recursive enumerable means the languages are accepted by fa fa acceptors accept rl pa acceptors accept cfl yes yes rl obviously yes that is very important and lpa do they accept csl yes cfl yes obvious rl obvious like turing missions which may not halt do they accept r e s c s l s c f l s r l s now it comes to finite automata do they accept c f l no this is not a subset is a superset no p a accept c s l obviously no l b a accept recursive enumerable obviously no so th this is what you have to be more familiar of this chomsky hierarchy we will write this hierarchy in a more in a different uh, manner 
Now we will start from here. When you have a language, you have a grammar. So regular grammar, regular grammar. This is also called type 0 grammar. Type 0 grammar. The language corresponding to this one is regular language. The finite automata corresponding to this is FA. You have to like remember this one regular grammar. So when you have a grammar, when you have a language means there need to be a grammar associated with this which is nothing but a regular grammar. This regular grammar is also called type 0 grammar. The acceptor, acceptor, this is very important, the acceptor. What acceptor is accepting these languages, regular languages? Finite automata. The next one, if it comes to the next layer, context free then it comes to type 2 grammars context free grammars cfg then context free languages the language corresponding to context free grammar is a context free language the context free grammar is also called type 2 grammar the acceptor for this Means one type of automata accepting this one is nothing but push down automata. The automata accepting CFLs is nothing but push down automata. The grammar corresponding to CFL is CFG which is nothing but type 2. Next it comes to context sensitive grammar type one grammar this one is a this is type 2 this one is not type 0 this is type 3 so the regular grammar is regular language and the finite automata is type 3 not type 0 now type 2 now type 1 type 1 is nothing but context sensitive language and context sensitive grammar and uh, the automata is corresponding to this one is Turing missions that halts next type 0 grammar this is recursive enumerable then the language corresponding to this one that the automata Turing mission may not halt means when you go here type 3 grammar followed by type 2 grammar followed by type 1 grammar followed by type 0 grammar type 3 grammar means regular grammar type 2 grammar means context sensitive grammar type 1 sorry context free grammar type 1 context sensitive grammar type 0 recursive enumerable so this is the chomsky hierarchy what we are going to elaborate in the upcoming sessions all the best and see you guys in the upcoming session